Our next speakers are Victoria Oliver and Mark Oliver, who are giving our Strand to Inspire session. Mark J. Oliver and Victoria Oliver aim to help people communicate, inspire a love of learning, and make work fun. Uh, they believe that people can discover their best selves through the practice of yoga, meditation, and mindfulness. During their session, we recommend uh, watching in speaker view. Take it away, Victoria and Mark. Please share your screen. Thank you. Thanks for the introduction. So welcome everyone to our talk, Staying Calm in Challenging Situations by Developing Mindfulness, Practical Tips. Uh, it's fireworks <laughs> in the background here because it's a bonfire night in the UK. So these challenging situations could be in the classroom, the teacher's room, or beyond. So let's look at our session aims. In this session, you will gain a better understanding of what mindfulness is and how it can help you stay calm. Practice activities to develop your ability to be mindful and learn mindfulness techniques to use in challenging situations. So I'm gonna hand you over now to Victoria. Thank you very much, Mark. Thank you, Helen. I'm really happy to be here tonight to be teaching you mindfulness and sharing you my knowledge about what mindfulness is and how we can improve ourselves by being mindful. So let's have a look first at what mindfulness actually means. Today, there's a lot of confusion. Uh, often this term is, um, is used almost in interchangeably with uh, other terms, with other words like meditation, awareness, journaling, self-reflection. So let's find out what mindfulness is. Let's have a look. Here, I'm presenting to you uh, a few different uh, definitions by the in individuals who uh, devoted their lives to uh, the study of mindfulness, to um, spreading the word and teaching the techniques of mindfulness. So let's have a read, let's have a look at these definitions first. I'm gonna take all the attention now. <laughs> Okay, so first of all, the first one is uh, by John Kabat-Zinn. He defines mindfulness as paying attention in a particular way, on purpose, in the present moment, and non-judgmentally. The next one, Sylvia Borstein, uh, says that mindfulness is the aware, balanced acceptance of the present experience. It isn't more complicated than that. It is opening to or receiving the present moment, pleasant or unpleasant, just as it is, without either clinging to it or rejecting it. And uh, finally, uh, Thich Nhat Han defines mindfulness as um, as showing us what is happening in our bodies, in our emotions, in our minds, and in the whole world. Through mindfulness, we avoid harming ourselves and others. So as you can see, these three definitions are quite different from each other, but at the same time, they have the same idea, they have the same common unifying thought of being present, being living in the moment, paying attention to what's happening within us, to what's happening around us, and noticing it in a non-judgmental way. This last part is very important because we all have our likes and dislikes, and mindfulness is about just taking things, accepting them as they are. So let's find out, let's see what, sorry, what uh, are the benefits of mindfulness? Um, explicit studies and research uh, has shown that it can help reduce stress, anxiety, uh, lower depressive moods and depressive episodes. It lowers heart rate, hypertension, it can aid in pain management and in chronic disease management as well. It boosts immune system, something that's very important nowadays. 
in this uh, in the current climate of the uh, uh, COVID-19, we all need our strong immune systems. We need them to be resilient to fight uh, to fight the, the disease, to fight any uh, external viruses. Uh, being mindful can also help you improve brain function. It improves concentration, focus, memory. And like I mentioned, it builds a resilience, not just your not only in the physical body, but also in the mental body, in your, in your emotional state. It increases overall sense of well-being, and of course, practicing mindfulness can help us stay calm in challenging situations. That's what we are all about today here. So how can we develop our ability to be mindful? Are there any special techniques that we can learn? Yes, there are. And we are about to have a look at them and practice them as well. They are simple, they're easy to do. Any one of you can start practicing them today. And in fact, it is the perfect time to, to start right now. So first, developing mindfulness. Let's just dig a little bit deeper into um, into this uh, definition, into this uh, idea. What is it like to be present, live in the moment? Can you now recall maybe the past few times when you were 100% present uh, in a certain situation, in a certain experience? Just have a little think to reflect and um, just feel, were you there 100%? Um, are you here 100% now? Are you fully present? Another great technique that can help you um, uh, develop your mindfulness is becoming aware of your breathing. Breath is a great tool. Uh, that we can utilize uh, to help uh, to help us calm our mind down, to um, to relax our body, to stop uh, the trail of thought, and to just be calm. So noticing your breathing is very important. Normally, in stressful situations, what happens is our breath becomes rapid; it becomes shallow, and we breathe like this. <laughs> If we just notice that, if we acknowledge it, we can reverse. We can send a long, deep breath. Let our brain that everything's okay. No need for the flight of uh, fight or flight mode. That we are all right, and all our body parts, our muscles will relax. Will feel much more at ease. Also becoming aware of our own emotions and feelings is quite important. If you can label, if you can name your own feelings, become aware of your own emotions, it will be much uh, easier for you to notice those same emotions in others. It will be easier for you to address them with empathy. And lastly, uh, it's also quite important to self-reflect. But when I say self-reflect, I mean, just have a look, uh, refer, go back to the situation that was stressful, that, that was challenging, and see how things evolved there. Don't self-judge yourself. You want it to make a, a positive experience. You want this uh, to be a habit, the self-reflection part. So we don't want uh, any negative thoughts, any uh, judgment, uh, anything like that. So instead of focusing on uh, what you shouldn't have done, try to rethink it, try to uh, sort of turn it upside down and think of what you should do of what or, or what you can do next time. So it'll become a positive experience for you. And it's also 
something that you will remember to do next time that you're uh, handling a stressful situation. So now we're moving on to a mindfulness practice. I encourage you to practice with me. I'm going to introduce um, some breathing uh, techniques to you. So I believe we all sit in a comfortable seated position. I'll just move slightly away the microphone so you can hear me properly. Okay, so the first uh, thing I'm going to introduce uh, is the full yogic breathing. It's also called the three-part breathing. Okay, so let me just lower the camera a little bit so you can see. So first of all, when we begin our breathing practice, I want you to sit upright, place your hands on top of your knees, And just take a moment and just draw a breath in and breathe out. There's nothing difficult about that. You're just breathing in and breathing out. So the full yogic breathing consists of three parts. First, we inhale into our tummy. Second part is we concentrate on our chest area. And lastly, we focus on the, on the clavicular bones, on the collarbones. So let's begin. You can place your hand on the stomach. And what we're going to do is we're going to inhale and draw all the breath only into the stomach. As if you're inflating your tummy like a big balloon. And as you exhale, let that balloon deflate. Let's do this. Let's try this for three counts, for three rounds, sorry. Each, um, each inhalation and each exhalation should last for about four to five counts. So let's practice together. Hand on your stomach. Inhale. And exhale. Only your stomach is moving, not your chest, not your shoulders. Inhale again. If you feel comfortable, you can close your eyes and really focus on that movement of the movement of breath. And exhale. Next part of the three part breathing is our chest. So we'll be focusing on this region. You can place one or both hands on top of your chest. And as you inhale, allow your chest to lift and your rib cage to expand. Keep your stomach in. Inhale. Feel your chest rise. And as you exhale, your ribs come close to each other. Inhale again. Long breaths. Exhale. And one last time. The third part is to concentrate on our collarbones. You can also place your hands just there. You can probably also feel your pulse, feel your heartbeat. Inhale. It's a very subtle movement here. You're only slightly spreading your collarbones away from each other. So don't move your stomach or your chest, only the collarbones. Breathe in. And breathe out. 
and again. I encourage you to do it with your eyes closed to really focus on what's happening inside your body. And exhale. And now we're going to combine all three of these movements, stomach, chest, clavicular bones. So first you draw the breath all the way into your tummy. Let it become, become big as a balloon. Then you follow up with chest. Then lastly, your collarbones. To exhale, you deflate the stomach, then your chest, and then the upper part of your body. Let's try three rounds as well. So stomach, inhale, chest, keep inhaling, collarbones, even more. And exhale from the stomach first, then your chest and your collarbones, and twice more. Stomach, feel it bulge out. Chest, feel it rise. And collarbones, see them smile. Exhale. Fully and completely. And one last round. So this was the full yogic breathing. I hope you're feeling much more relaxed. Mm. <clears throat> okay, I was a little bit nervous just before this and now I'm very calm, very relaxed. I hope you're feeling the same. So let's move on to our next technique. That's mental centering. It includes four parts. So it consists of movement, breath, intention, and self-talk. Uh, so I put a little note here. Uh, it can also be called the shark fin. You're going to find out uh, why. So let me just stop sharing so you can see me. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to gather all this brain activity, all the erratic chaotic waves that are happening, that are uh, being dispersed from our brain into the outer world. So we, we're trying to collect it all, bring, bring some order into our life, bring some uh, peace and uh, gather all that energy back to the center. So Place your hands level with your temples. Your hands, your fingers slightly cupped like this. So not too far away, not too close. You should be able to feel your hands even with your eyes closed without looking at them. So the first part is the movement. The movement is this. At this point, your thumbs touch your eyebrows and finally you move your hands towards your chest towards your heart this is the first part this is the movement second part is the breathing so as we hold our hands here next to our temples we inhale as we draw our palms in front of our forehead we exhale Inhale again, hold your hands. And exhale, bring them to the heart. Once again, so you have the hands with the movement, the breathing, the intention is very important. So you need to remember what you're doing this for. You're gathering 
the waves, that erratic activity that's happening in your brain, in your mind, and you collecting it all, bringing the order back to your life and connecting your brain with your heart. As you're doing all this, you can say these words, you can say them uh, in your mind, but just remember what you're doing this for. Don't just do the movement and the breathing, then there is no point really. And let's try to combine all these four things, uh, uh, the movement, the breathing, the uh, intention and the self-talk just for a couple of rounds. Please join me. It's really helpful. It is it's also very helpful with the headaches. If you suffer from them, it's gonna, you, you're going to experience great relief. So hands level with your temples. Inhale. Do it with your eyes closed. Exhale. Draw your hands with your thumbs touching the forehead, the space between your eyebrows. Inhale again. And exhale. Bring your hands to the heart center. And again. Inhale, feel your hands gathering the energy. Exhale, and draw it all to the center. Inhale. And exhale, take it to your heart. So this was this, the mental centering technique. You can also teach your students, practice it in the classroom. So this can be the shark fin is if you're practicing with young learners. And uh, you can teach them this fun technique. They can also add sound to it. So for example, as you inhale and as you exhale, you can add to help uh, the kids, younger learners to concentrate more. Okay. And uh, a last um, a technique here of becoming more mindful. Sorry, let me go back. Okay, so it's meditation. A lot of people get a little bit scared when they hear this word. Meditation doesn't have to be a, a full one hour practice uh, in a cross-legged position. It can be a two minute practice. It can be a practice in, in uh, silence. It can be a meditative walk. It can be a... Um, it can be just a mindful sitting down and just being present. Just take as long as two minutes. That's all it takes to recognize your current mental state, to recognize your feelings and to bring yourself back to the present moment. <clears throat> so uh, we're also gonna have a, uh, have a look at some mindfulness techniques to help us stay calm in challenging situations. So that's what you, you can practice when uh, you, you uh, actually are in that particular uh, stressful situation. So what you can do is you can uh, uh, focus on recognizing and naming the emotions the other person is feeling, again, in a non-judgmental way. <clears throat> Acknowledge the needs of the other person with empathy. So don't see them, don't see them as uh, needy or, um, or as troublemakers. There's always a need behind a certain feeling or a certain emotion. Maybe uh, a need for respect is not being met. Maybe a need for acceptance, a need for security, or maybe it's some other need. Um, <clears throat> also, it's important uh, 
to recognize emotions of others. So by practicing a mindfulness, this mental centering technique, uh, a quick, short meditations, you'll become aware of your own emotions, your own feelings, and it'll be easier for you to recognize them in others. So let's have a look at uh, some do's and don'ts. Um, um, that um, <laughs> normally, sorry, <laughs> do's and don'ts um, that uh, arise in um, stressful, challenging situations. Um, first, we have a look at don'ts, and that's most of us unfortunately do quite often. So what we shouldn't do is we shouldn't blame the person for the, uh, for the emotion or feeling they're experiencing. Have you ever heard yourself saying, why are you so angry? Or what made you so tense? Maybe they don't know. It's not their fault that they're going through these feelings. Instead, you need to voice out their feeling or emotion. And you can say things like, I can sense the frustration you're experiencing. I can sense, um, I can sense uh, some, um, some disappointment or uh, you sound very upset. Can we talk about it? Try not to generalize, uh, putting emotions in these big boxes, labeling them as happy, mad or sad. Instead, try to name a specific feeling, uh, and if that is possible. Uh, so, for example, if a person is sad, it might be because they're frustrated or because they feel excluded or disappointed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, try not to minimize or correct their emotions. Um, so quite often we hear ourselves saying things like, you're overreacting, I'm sure it's nothing, you shouldn't worry about that, or you shouldn't be mad, you should be happy. So don't correct their emotions. Instead, recognize and acknowledge uh, that the issue is important to the person. That's the best thing you can do. And lastly, don't get defensive or try to fix their problem. Don't try to give any piece of advice uh, when it's not being called for. Instead, just listen, be there for them, let them vent, give them that chance to figure it out uh, by themselves, to figure out their own solution. If they need a piece of advice, they will come to you, they will ask for it. And uh, how can we acknowledge the needs of the person with uh, empathy? It's quite important to see, uh, to see past the words and the language that the person is using, especially if it's rude. So remember, there's always a human being behind those words, behind that language. <clears throat> Again, consider what need is not being met and ask yourself if they're going through some pain, having difficulty expressing their needs, because it is quite a difficult, um, task. It takes practice to recognize your own emotions. And maybe that person is not, um, is not uh, very comfortable, not very confident, uh, not very experienced in this field, especially if they're young. Uh, and finally, don't take it personally. It's not about you. You can always say, oh, what about my feelings? But at the moment, it's not you it's about them and all these things even though they the situation may be seen as a negative one these situations and how you're handling them can help you build a deeper bond with that person uh, <clears throat> so last part some quick practical tips uh, practice the techniques on someone you don't know well unfortunately we have the least patience for the people we care about for the people, for the loved ones, the ones we spend most of the time, most of our time with. Uh, second one, never stick your butt in an, angry in an angry person's face. This is also very important. We all have our reasons, but <laughs> angry person doesn't want to hear that, but you can always um, choose, choose a sentence that will uh, lead it will lead them into a calmer state of mind. For example, you can say, um, okay, I can hear the frustration in your voice. I would like to help you with that. 
So don't re reverse back to you saying, but I'm, it's always about them. Again, listen, listen, and listen. Stop your own thoughts and just listen. You might discover something new. And of course, always be aware of your breath. If you'd like to stay in touch, if you have any more questions or just uh, would like to uh, keep up with our uh, updates, you can always um, message us uh, email. Everything's here. Take a screenshot, a snapshot. So you have it when you need it. And you can follow my Instagram page where I share updates about yoga, mindfulness and things like that. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much, Victoria. Thank you. Um, super useful and i'm sure that a lot of us have gotten a lot from that session it's very well needed i think you know given that <laughs> overview of what mindfulness is and some techniques so we can all use when we're facing or experiencing challenging uh situations um my favorite was the yoga breathing at the start that was like <laughs> my therapy for the week thank you so much thank you i'm so happy to hear that i hope it helps a lot of people and just to manage day-to-day -day, uh, little stresses little um you know little situations that we find ourselves in thank you so much again and everybody will be back in about five minutes for the next session see you then <laughs>